Ah, big freaking water. I mean, I've never been in water this big before. And it is so deceptive. You know, you're looking at something that's like a class one or looks like class one or two and you get into it and it's like, whoa, bigger than anything else I've seen before. Big, huge river. And, you know, like Boris was saying, the waves are really deceptive. And, you know, I've, I've seen big waves, but you're looking down on the rapid and you're look, studying it, and figure out a route, you're going, okay, yeah, you know, miss the hole, hit that wave train, no problem. And then you get on the waves and the waves are 50% bigger than anything I'd ever been on before. It's just really, really impressive. Marty and I are gonna be best friends for a long time, but... Have you ever been on a river that's even comparable to this one? No. Swimming, swimming's not an option. <laughs> Water's lava, get out. Get into something floating, it's big. And the one really known rafting section, the Great Bend, had already been flooded by three dams. But I always had my eye on the lower canyon section. I always seeing the satellite imagery and looking at the maps and the gradient seemed to be at least as nice or incredible a section of river as the Great Bend. And nicer in my mind to these upper canyon sections just because it's lower and warmer and I figured it'd be less restricted not moving next to the Tibet Autonomous region. The whole lower canyon section is about 960 kilometers from uh, where they ended the Great Bend down to Yabin, which is kind of where the canyon just opens up. So it's a huge long section, but they had already flooded about 500 kilometers of that with uh, three giant dams and there were two more under construction to flood the remaining 400 kilometers or so. And we found out a little more about the dams that they were gonna be completed in one and two or three years. And it ended up being just a really, really incredible section of river. Just big water, average flow, 140,000 CFS. It's after the Yalong Jiang comes in right by Panshawa. So it's a giant big river, but it's got a lot of rapids still on there, fun, big water, class twos and threes mostly. And then that lower section below Wudongde, there's a, a number of fours and one big five. So that's called Lao Jun Tan. That's a big rapid that goes on for four kilometers, five plus. Prior to Rocky's 2018 descent, no foreigners had ever ventured down the lower canyon stretches. The last descent was the Chinese teams in 1986 during the infamous race to run the Yangtze that resulted in the loss of 11 lives. <laughs> this is Actually, this is a Chinese wet wine. White wine. Yeah, it's a wet wine. Yeah. <laughs> we will take this. <laughs> yeah, this is this. Barbera wine, so you can't pack it to Barbera. <laughs> anyway, this is how we open bottles of wine and drink them and pour them in the water. This kitty cat. Cats. I don't have a dog though for a boat, so we're dealing with this one. <laughs> Leo, what is this? Oh, you always use this to cook. To cook? Yeah. The is salty, it, yeah, salty. Is it good on sandwiches? Uh, depending on yourself. <laughs> but not very spicy. <laughs> not very spicy. <laughs> you know the term nimble? Like this? 
Like, you're quick. Oh, you're quick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're like a big, we're like one of these big mining trucks, and he's like in a sports car. The loss of the blur. Love it. Love it. I don't want to go climb <laughs> anymore. <laughs> but never do like this. Don't know how beautiful it is. Just to take train, cross the river. Oh, it's good. Not like that. Like a different world in China. What do you got going here, Boris? It is a Chinese stir fry with a Croatian touch <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chinese supervision here. From Leo. How's it looking, Leo? It's the first time I use this stuff to cook rice. <laughs> uh, I need a little bit of water. Very good. <laughs> Very spicy. Very spicy. Which one? I think maybe this one. Tigers. Tiger skin. No matter where we went in China, the marvels of engineering and investment in infrastructure were evident. We saw dozens of mega highway bridges and massive mountain burrowing tunnels that dwarfed anything I've seen in the US. It's a yeah, local language. <laughs> oh. Even I can't understand, figure out what he said. The, yeah, the town's name. Yeah, but I think shopping is here. So you're gonna go in and find us? Yeah. Truck? And a van? Yeah, find a truck and a van for us. And then I take a motorbike or some stuff to go find you guys. Yeah. So we reached the Shapingzi Bridge and uh, stopped here for lunch. And I explained to the guys and showed them on the, the satellite imagery of what's coming up downstream because there's the bridge rapid which has a lot of big river wide, uh, I mean waves across in different parts of the river that you have to go through after that. It's kind of a sh sh right to left turn. You want to be on the inside both of those places to avoid some nasty stuff on the outside. So I call that kind of the S turn. Um, at least when you know what's coming up, you can prepare and it's not so bad. So we're here at our uh, last camp before the Bodongde Dam site and maybe 10k downstream of Champingzi Bridge and we found a road farther down from last year, it comes easier place to take out. <laughs> and all these people, local people, they hear about us and they want to come down and see who we are and what we're doing. So we just 
having some fun times with them. We got Leo here to translate and tell them everything we're up to. No, the village. Oh, the village. Uh, Chen Chang. Chen Chang. Yeah, here is a uh, Zhuan Tang. Yeah, that village is a uh, Zhuan Tang. Here is a uh, Da Zhuan Tang. Yeah, means a uh, big Zhuan Tang something. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have some visitors here, Leo. Yeah, yeah, we have some visitors. Tell me, what, what are they saying? They, they're relocating and what yeah, did they tell you? Uh, I think they will get a lot of money from the government and can move to new place by a house. How many yuan? How many yuan? That's uh, 300,000 yuan. That's per right. Per family? Yeah, per family. It's about $50,000. Yeah, about $50,000. Yeah, next two months <coughs> they will move up something upper, mm -hmm. but they're very worried about... Yeah, they don't worry about the house, but they worry about how they make life, <laughs> jobs, what they do there, no fields, yeah. We're going through five more rapids I didn't do last year in the 13 kilometers between this point and down to Danabada, which is just two, two, three K before the Wudongde dam site. The dam is pretty much completed, but they've delayed it a little bit. Last year they were saying it was going to be done and everybody had to move out when it was flooding in June this year. And the people we're talking to now, they say they have until November. To tackle some of the large rapids downstream, Rocky developed autorights, detachable modules that can be strapped to normal rafts and help them right in the nearly inevitable event of a flip. They call them in English, they call Litchi, but so we had a couple delays getting around the dam. The first one was where the truck picked us up, got stuck. We were delayed about three hours there until another big truck and with a cable could pull it out. And uh, we took a little bit more time for a few of us to paddle down as far as we could to near the dam site. We ended up staying in a hotel in Wudongde, Lower Town, as well. Again, this time, the same place we stayed last year. And in the middle of the night, there was a cop, a policeman, who came and knocked on Leo's door and wanted to know what all the white guys here were to, trying to do. So we had to spend all morning going around and talking to different people. The uh, person in the dam we went to first, and we talked to a secretary of like the county. Um, he didn't seem to care. He said, you can go through the dam, just put in and go. The guy in the dam, uh, Three Gorges Corporation, didn't seem to care either. But the police guy did. And so we went in and talked to the director of the police there. And he basically said, no, you can't float here, it's impossible. So we were kind of stonewalled a little bit, but I ventured the question, do you mean we can't float anywhere in China or anywhere on this river or just on this section of the river? And he thought about it and he said, well, you can float other sections of the river downstream, but not in our area here. So we took that to mean, well, we can come down here because we're well past the dam site. Well, there is some construction stuff going on here. You see, they still have the gravel mining quarry, and this is where they're breeding fish. <laughs> but fortunately, on the last time I was down here, I got to know the guy who runs the security right here, and he let us through the gate, and we've been in contact with him, and he said, no problem, just come in. We pay him a little bit, and uh, they help carry the stuff down to the river. So we're here, a little late, 
We're hoping to still be able to make it down a few kilometers, but we might have to camp here. We'll see how it goes. Laojun Tan, one of the largest rapids outside of Tiger Leaping Gorge. Laojun starts off with a dramatic bang as the majority of the river flows right through a monstrous series of waves and holes. The sneak route to the left is still an enormous challenge as the river winds its way through boulders the size of houses. Beyond the crux of Lao Jun, enormous waves continue on with semi-truck sized holes for another 3 kilometers. Although we spent a significant amount of time scouting, the length and continuous nature of Lao Jun makes it extremely challenging in rafts. 
The Chinese teams knew about this place as dozens of fishermen had died there over the previous centuries. Both the Luyang and Sichuan teams recognized the importance of being the first to run this major rapid. The Sichuan team was the first to challenge La Jun. On September 30th, 1986, they made a plan to have a safety motorboat downstream and run a capsule with three team members through the rapid. There are reports of members vomiting and using oxygen tanks aboard the capsule as they violently bobbed through the gigantic hydraulics. As the waters began to calm, the motor rescue boat attempted to make contact with the capsule, but the force of the current flooded the open boat and sank it. The four members aboard the rescue boat clung to the outside of the capsule. Another rescue boat managed to rescue three of the previous rescuers, and the capsule continued downstream through Baie Shoals, another Class 5 rapid. situation here. Uh, so Boris and Leo walked. The uh, plan was that one raft, everybody reconvene at the bottom where the village was. But uh, the autorites came into use for Cliff and Joe. And for Cliff, they ended up folding over. So he <clears throat> was floating down on an upside down uh, cataract still, kind of tilted up on its side. I had sent Sam down to find Dakota and Marty. We still don't know where they are, though I saw them in the drone upright going into the final part of the rapid. So they're probably downstream a ways. And what happened was uh, Joe kept following Cliff past the point where we were supposed to stop to pick up uh, Boris and Leo. So at this point, Joe, me, and Cliff are all reconvened about 2K downstream of the village. On the left, we've uh, resituated the oars. Cliff had a Ben oar on his raft. We want to make sure they're okay. So what we've done here now is get all our communications set. So Cliff, Joe, and I will each have a radio walkie-talkie. And Cliff has his cell phone that's working and we've established communication. I can communicate with my cell phone to his. Leo has a cell phone that's on Dakota's raft. We can't communicate with them right now. I tried calling that number and it said it's turned off. But I think what we're gonna do is, Joe might hike up the trail a little bit, try and find, uh, see if he can spot Boris and Leo. We're gonna try to uh, get them down to the raft as soon as possible, it might be better to put a one of the rafts on the other side of the river just so they can see it and come down and communicate some. Um, and if Dakota and Bar Marty and Sam are just downstream a little ways, I'll communicate back up to these guys. They'll, they can wait maybe here or we can wait down there. But we got to all regroup again and make sure everybody's all fine and safe. So. A good little adventure there. Oh, class five. Class, class five hike for sure. And a class two. We leave the road bag carabiner on the mountain. <laughs> <laughs>
this uh, this rapid named uh, Sandalgo Rapid, and uh, yeah, maybe another name is uh, San Longgo. And he said uh, another a woman, a Chinese woman in the team, go to the rapid with a kayak. Yeah, and the, but yeah, nobody die, nobody die, just flip out and swim. Yeah. Marty and I are gonna be best friends for a long time. Swimming, swimming's not an option. <laughs> the water's lava. Get out. Get into something floating. It's big. We're gonna be in Dakota's raft, uh, Leo and I, and we're gonna be paddling and aggressively to help him avoid the obstacles. One of the things I really hope to accomplish with uh, doing these trips on the Yangtze is to put media out there, put some film, some articles, some web pages up, just make it more known to the rafting community in the world as well as the Chinese people and the Chinese government that they still have some very incredible sections of river remaining on the Yangtze that they can preserve and protect so future generations can come here and uh, enjoy and see what the free-flowing river was, is like. I mean, the, the whole river with the canyon and rapids that's kind of Grand Canyon-like is 2,500 kilometers, maybe 3,000 kilometers, and they've already dammed up about half of it. And there's dams under construction that are gonna dam at least another five, six hundred kilometers and they have dams to, plans to put in another eight dams in this whole upper canyon section. So the word really needs to get out and, and people need to start coming here to appreciate the free-flowing river for what it is <clears throat> in order for the Chinese government to make a uh, an effort to protect some of these sections again. The river has changed dramatically with the construction of 10 massive dams on the course of the mainstream Yangtze, already flooding approximately 41% of the canyon section suitable for a dam. Another four dams currently under construction, four more dams approved for construction, and another nine planned dams would bring the total to 27 dams and flood nearly 70% of any canyon sections left on the Yangtze. While the immediate future may be more financially prosperous for some, it is now well documented that the environmental damages caused by dams may very well have long-term financially damning effects. Ultimately though, this is China, and it will be up to the Chinese authorities to make decisions about precious resources like the Yangtze. While the future of the Yangtze looks bleak, I feel privileged to have experienced the strength and beauty of one of the last great rivers on Earth.